How is an Australian medtech company set on the path to developing a fast, inexpensive test for the virus causing COVID-19? Find out on this episode of Tomorrow's Tech. With over 25 years experience as a medical oncologist, before co-founding Zinc Technologies, we welcome on the show Paul Mannering. Welcome, Paul. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's really exciting to be here. Let's have a look at what Zing Technologies is achieving. A Queensland medical breakthrough could change the way millions of people around the world are diagnosed. It's a portable home kit designed to detect how likely you are to suffer from heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, even cancer. It might not look like much, but this is revolutionary, life-saving technology. The technology that we've developed really is a game changer. Based in Brisbane, but ready to change the world, Zing Technologies is behind this simple and affordable way to screen for potentially deadly diseases. And the technology's primary focus is detecting cancer and tuberculosis, but it has the ability to be used for other diseases, such as Alzheimer's and diabetes. What the teams of scientists have done is created a completely new way of identifying the virus that causes COVID-19. What we've done is created a programmable molecule that binds to the spikes of the virus and creates a colour change that can be read just like a pregnancy test. Through Zing Technologies, how are you giving the power back to cancer patients? So there's a thing called nanotechnology that's really disrupted our understanding of how cancer is formed and what treatment options are available. And the clever scientists at Zing Technologies have developed a 1000 cancer gene panel. They've hoovered up all the changes that you can find across all the databases and put them into what we call a NATA certified. That is a government certified laboratory that enables patients to sit down with their medical oncologist and truly understand what has caused their cancer, what treatment options they've got, enable them to get access to clinical trials. So even the more exciting and new drugs that are coming through may be made available to them. And how is the significance of your product evolving when it comes to infectious diseases? So we are really, really lucky. One of the PhD um, from the University of Queensland, ironically, students here has come to work at Zing Technologies. And his PhD was on developing a new disruptive antibody-like molecule that is cheap to manufacture, highly accurate and highly scalable. That means you can make millions of tests very, very quickly. And so what we've been able to do with the funding from the CSIR originally is pivot from developing dengue fever to COVID-19. And within a couple of months, we had a product ready. Then the National Institute of Health from the United States picked up the technology and gave us one million US dollars to our Australian consortium to rapidly develop this test to bring it to the market. Finally, the Queensland government has come to the party and so we hope to be able to extend this technology over the next several months into a whole new realm of innovative areas. This will be a fast, inexpensive, less than a cup of coffee test that you can do yourself. It will get people into nursing homes safely hospitals safely, back into the workplace, on aeroplanes, cruise liners. This is going to be truly disruptive technology. That's wonderful news, Paul. In the process of developing Zing Technologies, what have you learned and what would you like to share with the entrepreneurial community in the healthcare sector? I think the most important thing is that you're not alone. You need to find mentors and make it a collaboration. What Absolutely. I really, really learned is that by it will take twice as long, it's twice as hard, it's twice as expensive and it's twice as frustrating. And therefore, if you can get people to help you carry up along the journey, then you won't feel so much so alone. Zing Technologies, like other purposeful ventures, is reliant on investment and funding to ensure growth on a global scale. What is your experience with the Australian investment community and what avenues for change and improvement do you see? I would really like to disrupt the Australian investment community, particularly when it comes to biotechnology. We can understand that investment is risk averse and risk management is really important. But I'd like a small portion of the portfolio to be given away to high risk ventures where the brokers who rely on bonuses aren't penalised for investing in innovative solutions. What we've been able to do is try and find mentors like the Thai Entrepreneurship Group to help guide you through that 
very challenging commercial narrative just as much as the technology one that you're trying to develop. Thank you for sharing your learnings through this journey, Paul, which has been stepped up in recent months in light of COVID-19. Appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you very much. It's been really fun. No doubt our audiences will be supporting your efforts. And to our audiences, if you'd like more deep insights to the hard questions across sectors, continue to follow us across our Tomorrow's Tech LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe to Tomorrow's Tech YouTube channel. But for now, thank you for watching. Be the movement and see you next time on Tomorrow's Tech. Tomorrow's Tech, presented by 3.digital.